Hello, and thanks everyone for joining. It is a pleasure to be here talking at the Automation DevOps Summit. While I know most of you were hoping to join in person, myself included, I hope you're all still able to enjoy the conference at home. On the bright side, you can now skip all the lunch lines, stay in your comfy pajamas all day. And if I ramble on too long, not feel awkward leaving early from the front rows. Hopefully that is not the case, as today's talk will cover automating cloud security using various serverless solutions, and will highlight many relevant examples throughout. I've been involved in the infra or cloud infrastructure and security space for a few years now, working previously at Capital One, in both the Innovations Lab, as well as time managing their internal cloud infrastructure, compliance and security teams. I then joined Premise Data, a much smaller company, earlier this year on their infrastructure and security team, and ended up building and relying on many serverless solutions. So this talk will focus on why serverless solutions can be a great fit for addressing cloud security, what about serverless lends itself well in this space, and of course, go through a series of examples highlighting various use cases. The talk will begin by quickly defining serverless for those who may not be very familiar with the paradigm and go into details on why serverless for security specifically. Next, we will go over three different areas of cloud security that serverless can be leveraged for with examples. The first will be how serverless can be used for finding and aggregating vulnerabilities. Since if you don't know what the vulnerabilities or problems are, there's obviously no way to address them. Once you have various ways of finding vulnerabilities, the following step is to remediate them, which is what we will cover next. Finally, we will go over some of the strategies that make vulnerabilities obsolete with the keyword of some. What I, what I mean by this, and for those who are working in cloud security already know, your security can never be perfect. There's always gonna be ways to improve security and trade-offs to be made. The best security would block all access to your entire cloud, including access to developers, but obviously that is not feasible if you want a working product. So what I mean by making some vulnerabilities obsolete is by building some automation that prevents certain states or resources configurations from occurring in the first place so you can focus on other more pressing security issues. I will then end the talk with plenty of time for questions and comments. I would like to hear, or I guess read in the comments now, your own use cases and solutions that leverage serverless for our cloud security. So what is serverless? Serverless is a powerful new paradigm brought on by cloud computing that is transforming how to develop, deploy, and manage applications. The name serverless can be misleading since code is still being executed on servers, but instead means that the cloud provider, which can be AWS, GCP, Azure, etc., handles all the responsibilities of your typical server. This includes all server management tasks, such as provisioning and security patching, in addition to the actual code execution. Without the burden of any infrastructure requirements, the developer is able to solely focus on writing code that matters. Additionally, serverless is, also, is often associated with pay what you use economics, which means you only pay for when you're actually running code and not for idle time. This can lead to huge savings, especially when compared to the old days where you'd have to host servers locally, pay for the full cost upfront, and you'd still be paying whether they're being used or not. Even in the traditional cloud computing, where you can scale up and scale down your compute, you still pay for the full cost of the servers you have reserved. At its core, serverless has come to mean uh, any service in which the user does not manage any servers, which over the past few years has come to encompass a broad range of services. In AWS, if you search for serverless, you'll get a list of over 12 different services, and that list continues to grow. These range from Lambda, a serverless function, to SQS, a serverless queue, to S3, a serverless storage. While I believe in all of these technologies, because it is very beneficial anytime you can remove an extra burden from the developer or operations team and allow them to focus on what is truly driving their company. However, this talk will focus primarily on serverless functions. These are the smallest units of serverless, just some simple logic bundled in for the cloud that can run in seconds, scale to hundreds or thousands instantly, and cost almost nothing. I think the power of these serverless functions can often be overlooked as teams try to build these complete platforms, centralized solution, uh, while kind of forgetting about these little small uh, serverless functions. When you think of cloud, cloud security, you generally think of a large centralized platform, 
usually ingesting and processing large amounts of data. Maybe you're running some periodic jobs to scan resources, or even a lot of manual security and architecture reviews or compliance checks. While these approaches do have some benefits, which is why they're even in use, they lack in many areas, especially in areas that serverless solutions can thrive. While I'm not recommending replacing existing platforms or toolings, I want to highlight how serverless solutions can augment current systems. Specifically, I want to go over the concrete benefit that a serverless solution provides. First up, with a serverless solution, you get built-in scaling, so you don't need to worry as your solution gains more adoption. You can test in an isolated environment and know that it will perform just the same elsewhere um, as your production loads get greater and greater. Obviously, as long as your code scales as well. Next, you get the benefit of minimal operations costs. Just like any other serverless service, you don't need to worry about the infrastructure operating system, patching, and all that comes with that. So you can have much leaner teams. In a similar vein, this means that teams can also deploy much quicker. We have some examples that were developed and deployed within a day. While one function is not gonna solve all of your security issues, being able to incrementally make improvements quickly does end up accumulating over time towards a, way, uh, a more robust security posture. The next benefit is gonna be able to trigger a function on real-time events. All, cl all cloud providers make this triggering pretty seamlessly, allowing you to react very quickly to various security events. In case you want custom event triggers, these are also very easy to implement, as you'll see in one of the examples later on. Finally, you have the benefits of a low-cost solution. You will only be charged for when the functions are actually being run, even if the cost for serverless function, or, and even then, the cost for serverless functions in all cloud providers is very cheap, so the more you can leverage them, the better. This is in addition to the cost savings from having smaller and lean teams with minimal cost for operations as well. While serverless functions in general are, very, are pretty easy to develop and deploy, there are a few open source frameworks out there to make the development and deployment cycles even easier. I will highlight a few here that I've used in the past and in the case of Goblet created myself, but there are certainly many others out there as well. The first framework I'd like to highlight is actually called the serverless framework. It's one of the biggest projects in the space and covers almost all cloud providers and handles not just functions, but also many of the other related infrastructure components as well. While it is very robust, covers a lot of generic use cases, there is still a little learning curve since you'll need to know about the cloud or provider syntax, variables, um, and kind of the full syntax for your function. There are plenty of examples out there, so if you'd like a generalized and language agnostic solution, the serverless framework is a great place to start. In my case, I write all my function logic in Python, so for those of you who'd like to also leverage Python, Chalice uh, for AWS and Goblet for GCP are great places to start. They both offer a Flask-like interface that's easy to pick up and handle all of the cloud-specific provisioning behind the scenes for you. This includes the function itself, as well as other infrastructure-related pieces that you need, such as cron schedulers, various triggers, API gateways, and even per permissions. And the examples above, you have the simplest version of a Chalice and Goblet app. You simply initialize the base class, specify a route with whatever logic you'd like. With that defined, you simply need to run a deploy command from your CLI, your function is up and running. I've seen a college freshman who have had no cloud experience at all get a function up and running within 10, 15 minutes, which shows just how powerful and intuitive these frameworks are. Now that I've covered all the basics, I'd like to proceed into the meat of the talk and start going through concrete examples. In this first section of the talk, I'll be going over various serverless solutions related to finding vulnerabilities. While finding vulnerabilities is obviously very important, since without being able to discover the problems, there is no way to fix them. Finding vulnerabilities encompasses a broad range of use cases and is much more than simply using a pre-built tool or running manual audits. Solutions for finding vulnerabilities should be flexible and quick to deploy in order to keep up with an ever evolving security risks and compliance rules. Vulnerabilities should come with actionable information so that they can actually be resolved in a timely manner. And ideally you'd wanna centralize your vulnerability findings um, to make it easier for the security team while not centralizing the compute and aggregation logic um, and having kind of one giant monolith uh, behind the scenes. 
Now I will show some solutions for each of these areas and highlight the key serverless benefits that deploying these solutions enable. The easiest serverless solution is to utilize mature serverless solutions that already exist. One I want to highlight is Cloud Custodian, which has support for all the major cloud providers, but there are others such as maybe Forseti that focuses just on GCP. Cloud Custodian is a serverless backed tool that enables users to be well managed in the cloud. It has a simple YAML DSL, allowing you to easily define rules to enable the well managed cloud infrastructure that is both secure and cost optimized. You can get started very quickly by writing a simple policy, and all that is required is a name, a resource to target, filters that you'd like to apply, and then actions you'd like to take on those filtered resources. Once you have a policy written, you can test locally by simply running a CLI command to run. So let's take a brief minute to look at the two policy examples on this slide. The first example is called enable flow logs, and he's using the subnet resource. We have a filter that checks if flow logs are empty, which then passes all the subnets that do not have logging enabled to the action section. Here, we have a simple action to turn the flow logging on. So overall, when we run this policy, we will enable flow logging on all subnets that do not have it already enabled. The second example on the right side is called unused service account and is obviously a policy for the service account resource. In this case, we have a filter that checks cloud provider metrics to see if there are any authorization events the past 30 days, which filters out any service accounts that have been used um, in that time. We then have an action that disables the service account. We can additionally have other policies that check for disabled service accounts and maybe delete them after a certain duration. But overall, this allows us to have a policy that detects unused service accounts and runs certain actions on them, and in this case, to disable them. While having these policies is quite useful, we certainly don't want to be running these commands locally and also don't want to handle the ops of running this tool on a server or even a container. What makes Cloud Custodian powerful is that it's backed by serverless functions, so you can run a simple deploy command and have, all, have your policies run in functions in the cloud. These functions can then be triggered on a schedule, triggered mainly by you, or even triggered by various events, uh, which I will go into more later. I don't want to spend too much on Cloud Custodian, the tool specifically, but I did want to highlight the serverless aspects of the tool and what it helps enable since Cloud Custodian is a great example of all the serverless benefits I mentioned earlier. The development cost is low, since the YAML DSL is straightforward to write as long as you have an understanding of the vulnerabilities that you'd like to scan for and trigger actions off of. The actual deployment cost is going to be extremely low, since it is backed entirely by functions, and you'll only be charged when the policies are actually being executed. The solution scales not only for multiple projects or multiple policies, or for concurrent functions running, um, say you're having multiple resources being triggered at the same time, but also across projects and accounts. There's a wrapper called C7N org, which allows you to deploy your cloud functions across any number of projects with one simple command. There is also minimal ops, since there is no infrastructure to maintain. Most of the ops will be a monitor in the policies themselves to ensure that they are working as expected. Finally, the solution is very flexible. Since if you want to add new logic based on the recently died security risk, you can quickly add new policy, and deploy minutes without any downtime to your service. While finding vulnerabilities is great and all, just the discovery piece is usually not enough. The end goal is to fix problems you found, so you need to build in additional logic to your solutions. One of the biggest problems I've seen on the infrastructure, or one of the biggest problems I've seen infrastructure and security teams run into is figuring out who actually owns the resource, since these resources are often not tagged with who created them. If a person, if created by a person at all, um, and then many times these resources are years old and the original developers are long gone. Uh, not only would you want to notify the correct person as soon as possible, you'd like to provide them as much information as well so that they can actually fix the resource before being too reliant on it uh, or Move, moving on either within the company or outside of the company. We chose a serverless solution to this problem in order to build something lightweight and quick, keep operations and infrastructure costs down, as well as leverage serverless scaling capabilities. While this is really an ideal situation for a startup, I think large companies could utilize serverless solutions, um, especially get the same benefits as I mentioned here. 
Our solution simply involves using a goblet function that is triggered off of a pub sub topic, which is GCP's managed queue service. This topic or queue receives all new security findings along with some of the affected resource metadata. Our function ingests this metadata and has the logic to try to determine who the owner of the resource is. This part is a little complicated and is really where the core business logic lies and may be company specific, but since it is backed by a serverless function, this logic can easily be customized, updated, and deployed um, quickly. Our logic was broken down into a series of steps. First, we looked in to see if the resource had any owner in the metadata, uh, and if so, determine what team they belong to. Since people often move around or to part country, uh, companies, we wanted to notify a team and not just the individual. Especially if the individual is on vacation, you don't want to have these uh, uncompliant resources lying around waiting for them to come back. If there was no user and instead it was a service account or a machine role, we then looked up what team that service account belonged to. Finally, if both of these were turned empty, we had the team responsible for the project or the larger account and notified them. Once we had the team information, we sent them an email containing the basic information regarding the finding as well as links to the offending resource and details on how to remediate the issue. We were also able to forward this information to Slack as well to provide additional insight for those teams. Once the setup was deployed, we found overall compliance increased drastically while the time to remediate an issue went way down. And in terms of the operation cost, it's simply just a cloud function. Uh, so there it was very quickly to deploy, very minimal ops to continue to maintain. The last example I'd like to cover in this section is regarding the centralization of your security findings while not centralizing the compute and aggregation logic. What I mean by this is that it's useful to have a singular view on your security posture rather than having to dig into multiple services and tools to understand what is going on. However, on the other side, you don't want to centralize the compute and aggregation. This forces you to have large multi-purpose solutions that often ends up either routing in batch mode to pull in events or requires a lot of custom logic on one endpoint that handles multiple use cases. In this example, we want to centralize our security findings from GitHub and combine it with our core cloud findings, uh, which in our case, at premise, is backed by GCP's security command center. If we had one centralized tool and we would need to add logic there, it would require some sort of batch job to scan maybe for all new security uh, findings and then add those uh, findings to security command center. If we didn't want like a large batch solution, another possibility would be maybe to have a generic webhook that handles all event ingestion, whether from GCP or other external services and tools. Uh, the issue with that centralized solution is that we need to add logic to handle each of these services, specific events, since they would all be ingested in different formats, especially in the case for GCP. Both of these centralized use cases require custom logic to be added to an existing solution. This takes time as additional tests would need to be, would need to be added. Uh, and you not only need to test the new logic, but also ensure nothing else is being broken in the process. In the case of a large managed service, you would also need to handle, or you need also need to ensure that the new deployment uh, would be able to handle the new scale and not impact any of the existing services. So it really adds an additional ops burden and adds, many, many days um, to the deployment cycle than otherwise would be needed. And this cost kind of continues to grow as you integrate with more services, tools, um, and even if you try to remove tools, uh, you have a cost to, to kind of spin those things down. Instead, we went with a lightweight solution that using a serverless function deployed and developed via Goblet. This requires us to simply add an HTTP endpoint in Goblet, which contains our business logic, and create a GitHub webhook to push events to this new endpoint. This solution is completely decoupled from our other systems and still has minimal ops to deploy and maintain. To deploy a new endpoint to maybe an additional service, we'd simply create a new goblet back function and deploy in the same manner. Overall, our end-to-end -end solution works as follows. Various GitHub security events were sent to our new endpoint. This endpoint contains logic to determine if the event contained a new security event, in which case a corresponding finding was added to our security command center. If the event was about a security issue being resolved, which hopefully most of them are, <laughs> we would then close the corresponding finding in security command center. 
The complete discovery, development, and deployment of the solution took just a few days and has required almost no operations since it was deployed to production, since we do not need to worry about scaling or any infrastructure behind the scenes. While we have shown how serverless helps in various ways for finding security vulnerabilities, that does not help make the company or the cloud more secure unless actions are taken to remediate those problems. Here too, we can leverage serverless solutions. In the case of remediating security issues, we want to focus on solutions that are continuous, fully automated, and safe. Ha having a solution that is continuous is straightforward since we like to remediate issues as they come up, or at least remediate issues uh, in a certain and uh, dependable cadence. While we worked on the notification solution in the previous selection or section, the ideal solution will not require notifications to trigger actions into or trigger teams into actions but to automate the remediation steps as well. This automation ensures that security fixes are remediated in a reliable and repeatable manner. How often, there are often unknown consequences and edge cases while trying to automate security issues, especially around sensitive infrastructure such as firewall rules, service accounts, and keys. It is often the case that automation and safety are hard to combine in a solution, but I will go through some examples on how we are able to still leverage automated solutions in a safe manner. The first remediation solution that I would want to cover is related to overprivileged IAM service accounts. While this example is written in GCP, AWS and the other cloud providers have similar capabilities, uh, which really isn't the case uh, in all the other examples as well. If there is uh, not complete parity, I'm sure probably within the next year, um, all the cloud providers will have uh, parity in whatever service I am talking about. In this example specifically, we are looking for a solution that will remove permissions from service accounts or users that are not being used. This adheres to the security principle of least privilege. However, the difficulty in achieving this goal is to actually determine what permissions or roles are being used, and if not, how to remove them, and then if in the case of roles, how to replace them with lesser roles um, while not breaking uh, the service itself. Luckily in this case, we are leveraging an additional service called GCP IAM Recommender that contains the majority of the sensitive logic, allowing us to have the automated function as safe as possible. In this example, we simply set up a scheduled job to run daily using, uh, using Goblet uh, for the deployment and development side. We add logic to check the IAM Recommender, which returns the service accounts that have unused permissions and overprivileged roles, as well as the recommended changes. This allows us then to simply apply the recommended changes to the service accounts directly. In order to make it even more safe, you can actually have an additional step before applying the changes that requires someone to maybe verify the changes before applying these automated changes maybe to production service accounts. And then your dev accounts can actually still be run fully automated. Our next service solution also looks to combine automation in a safe manner. Similar to the previous section where we leverage GCP's IAM recommender, in this case, we will leverage metric filters, which are available by a majority of the cloud providers. The great thing about these built-in metrics is that many of, or that quite a few of them measure usage. This allows us to determine if resources are being used at all, and if so, by how, by how much, GCP has compiled a giant list that you can browse as sorted by service, or you can play around the metric explorer console, which is shown above. While these metrics in themselves are helpful, you don't want to be checking these metrics manually for all of your resources, especially in large cloud environments that span multiple projects. And there's still the remediation piece that you'd like to automate. To solve for both of these problems, we can actually use Cloud Custodian, which we discussed earlier, which allows you to also utilize custodians built in actions, filters, in combinations with these metrics, and also leverage Cloud Custodian's serverless capabilities that handle the deployment and management of your serverless functions. In this solution, we look at sensitive infrastructure resources that are typically very hard to remediate since they have the potential to have significant impacts on the business and are hard to test for. Using metric filters, we are not only able to remediate many of these resources in a fully automated way, but to do so safely as well. The first policy on the left is for deleting unused service account keys in your environment. It begins with a regular value filter to ignore any system managed keys since we don't want to touch any of those. Then we use new metrics, then we use the new metrics filter. Here, the key parameter is the metric name, which in this case is the auth event count metric that is on service account keys. 
Um, AWS and Azure will have similar type metrics. So take a look at those providers uh, and, and look at how those metric filters are structured. Now we have filtered out any service account keys used in the last 90 days and can pass the remaining unused keys to the action block. In this case, we want to clean up our environment and delete them. Another great option before executing this policy is to run this policy in dry run mode so you can verify which keys are potentially being deleted and further evaluate the risk before writing this policy. Once we have verified the validity and safety of our policy, we can then leverage serverless to deploy and run in an automated manner, which in this case could be done using a cron schedule that runs maybe daily or weekly. The policy on the right is quite similar. In this case, we are looking at unused firewall rules in the last 90 days and then use the disable action. The only change required is the metric name, which mentioned earlier, GCP has compiled into a nights list, um, as well as the other, uh, other cloud providers um, also have these nice lists as well. And while this is probably not the best policy on its own, you can also include additional filters to check for firewall rules that maybe have an allow statement or look for specific ports. Once again, we verify its validity in a dry run manner. We can then again run in a simple deploy command and have a secure and automated remediation solution that fully deploys in minutes. While this is not going to be the best solution for maybe uh, your sensitive infrastructure that is still being used, this is a great place to kind of get those easy, like easy pickings on the outside um, and just start cleaning up uh, and get to a little bit more robust place in a fully safe manner. But security isn't always about fixing vulnerabilities after the fact. Oftentimes, it's about building solutions that make it easier for uh, developers to do the right thing. In this case, we want a solution that allows us to better manage our service account keys, which are used in our CICD processes to deploy applications and infrastructure to our cloud. We are easily able to automate a solution using functions on a daily schedule. The function itself contains logic to create a new service account key, delete any keys older than a certain amount of days, save the key in a secrets manager in case we would need to retrieve it later, and finally update the key in GitHub secrets uh, since we are using GitHub CI CD or GitHub Actions. The solution has several features built in to ensure safety, which includes having keys kept for a few days, as well as saving them in secrets manager in case they need to be recovered. This last section, I wanted to highlight the ideal state, which is to make vulnerabilities obsolete. What this requires is the same components highlighted earlier for remediating issues, which includes having a solution that is run continuously, is automated, and is safe. The main difference is the addition of tricking the remediate action at real time on resource creation. This ensures that your resources are never in an insecure state since they will either be deleted or fixed as they are created. This cannot be done for all resources, and there are some race conditions that occur if you're using infrastructure automation tools. However, every little improvement you can make is important, especially improvements that require very little time to develop and deploy, require minimal operations later on. Building solutions that take actions at real time is a perfect opportunity to make these little improvements. Since the actions are taken at one resource at a time, the actual negative impacts are quite minimal, all things considered. But it's not always the case. Just look at Facebook and the infrastructure team who want to simply do a little uh, software update on one of their routers. So I did warn you, if something does go wrong, you can't blame me. <laughs> you still need to test your code and test it again. Um, but yeah, try to find these policies and solutions where the impacts are minimal um, and the potential gains are um, really drastic. In this last solution, we want to leverage security events in real time. In this example, we want to build a solution that deletes firewall rules that have a high severity right as it is created. So it has no time to go into effect and it will have no um, kind of effects on your applications later on since that really firewall rule has not been used. This is a safe policy since it is only applying to new firewall rules. So it would not be able to, for example, delete all firewall rules that have a high severity, uh, which may be the, which you, I, hopefully you don't actually have, but maybe in a dev account you still have a firewall rule. Um, the only potential downside would be if you had an automated deployment script or infrastructure as code solution, that would keep trying to create a firewall rule if it didn't exist. 
This would create an infinite loop, but this can easily be detected using basic monitoring rules. And you can uh, notify the corresponding teams via email or Slack, um, or build some, ideally build some logic into your infrastructure and, and automate deployment scripts to time out after a few retries. We will build this solution leveraging GCP Security Command Center built-in event streaming functionality. To do so, we will create a log sync which forwards all security events to a pub subtopic, which is a, a GCP's managed queue. We can then trigger our function based on events that come in. We can additionally add a subscription filter uh, before triggering our function so that we can trigger our function based on a resource that we have the logic to remediate. In this case, we would apply a filter that would really only forward firewall security events with high severity to our um, end function. Even simpler, than our proposed solution, we can actually leverage Cloud Custodian's built-in execution mode that handles the lot sync and topic creation for us, as well as the policy logic. So all that would be required is to write the policy on the left side of the slide and deploy with Cloud Custodian. If we want to add additional actions or additional filters, we'd simply update the policy or create a new policy and or simply redeploy. Custodian also has a few different execution modes that can be used across all clouds, which includes triggering off of various types of real-time events that include security events, audit events, and other cloud providers uh, se specific services that have uh, event triggers. Overall, using both a real-time remediation strategy mentioned here and the previous discussed solutions, these are great ways uh, for first steps for cleaning up, improving, in maintaining a secure environment. Whether you're using kind of the built-in uh, tools such as Cloud Custodian that are backed by serverless, or simply building it from scratch, uh, using kind of frameworks such as serverless or goblet or chalice, uh, either solution you can get done in a few days um, and have it fully deployed, scaled up across all of your accounts and projects, um, which, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's really impactful and really shows progress uh, for a security team. Well, thanks everyone for your time. We covered a lot today, uh, starting with how serverless solutions are a great fit for, for security, uh, since they scale very well, require minimal ops to maintain, can be triggered in real time, have a quick development cycle, and overall have a low cost footprint. We also went over quite a few examples uh, about finding vulnerabilities. These include solutions that leveraged open source projects such as Cloud Custodian that are backed by serverless, solutions that automated the creation of sending notifications to the correct teams, and finally a quick and generic solution to centralize security findings from multiple tools. Next, we discovered how serverless solutions are great for remediating security issues with solutions that automatically applied least privilege recommendations for IAMs solutions that deleted resources safely in an automated manner using metric filters, and minimizing security risks with a solution that automated key rotations. And finally, but not least, we looked at how serverless solutions can be used to obsolete vulnerabilities by triggering actions in real time from security events. Many of these solutions discussed today have full write-ups um, already, or will have shortly, and can be accessed at the Premise Engineering blog that we started earlier this year which can be found at engineering.premise.com. Um, within these write-ups, we actually have a lot of the source code um, of these solutions as well. Well, thanks again. I'd like to take this opportunity to answer any questions you may have. I'd also love to hear and or read about any of your own serverless solutions that you'd like to share, especially in the security space. Well, thanks so much for having me and I'll, yeah, I'll open it up now.